Mon ami. Ça va, mon copain? Oui, 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 oui. How are you? I'm fantastic, right. despite the shitty weather. It's, it's really shitty. It's, um, would you believe we've got blue sky here for the first time in uh, oof, a week, perhaps? Would you believe we got in continuous rain since yesterday? Oh, it's good for the garden. Look at it it's that way. It's fantastic. That's why we've got the second most forested part of France here. I just uh, and I just had my glass of rosé with my little salad. <laughs> well, I'm drinking cafe because uh, I'm actually on a going on a supermarket expedition after this. But um, anyway, I was um, I was both um, alarmed and maybe I won't say relieved, but um, now that the tour has been officially moved again, um, apologies everyone apologies to everyone but yeah not it's not we can't i mean the chances of playing in april were always going to be slim um and uh you know it, it's not it's just not safe it's just not going to be safe and i'm sure everybody appreciates that um i'd love to see you man i'd love to see you in the flesh and just give you a cuddle and have a glass of wine. I really would. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, by, it's nearly a year since we've actually seen each other in, in, the, in the flesh, you know. Um, and that's got to be some kind of thing. And, of course, it's also a year since, since we saw old Dave, you know. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, about Dave recently. Uh, well, possibly because... Um... We've uh, we've been working on that track, Dave. Yeah, we have to say your guitar on it is fantastic. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I think the vocals are as well, mate. So I, I did the vocals here in France and sent them over, but I would have preferred a bit more direction from Louis, um, who wasn't obviously there. Um, but it's not the same as being the same room as with the band members and, and you bouncing off each other. No, it's not the same. no, no. However, we've managed to, yeah, it's, I think it's quite a beautiful tune. A beautiful it's, um, I played it. There's no keyboards in it, of course. I, I mean, I'm sitting here now down in my den and he's everywhere. I mean, you can stop listening to the music, which I couldn't listen to, never mind the new stuff that we've been working on, um, you know, with Dave very much to the fore, but even some of the old classics, I just couldn't, I couldn't listen to it. Uh, it's, it smashed me into bits. And then, um, but I see him every day. He's here every, everywhere. And, um, you know, it's the sort of thing that I think, I think really, you know, I mean, it's, you knew him twice as long as I did. Uh, but the 20 years that I knew him, it, it, it affected me in so many ways. Uh, and I miss him. I miss him. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, really do miss, I really do miss him terribly. Uh, he was special. I mean, he was so special. I, I remember the first time I met him, we were still in Chillingfold in the, what, what became the squat. Yeah. And all our equipment was in the hallway. <laughs> um, uh, so, and I managed to convince uh, my bank manager to lend me some money to buy a keyboard. And so Dave just came in with his platform at heels. His, um, I think he had a suede, short suede jacket and carrying a bag. <laughs> That's funny, that, isn't it? Funny yeah. That. And he. <laughs> This guy with a, a, a moustache, which we used to call a semi-pro moustache, because in those <laughs> days, you know, if you fancied it, if you had a... Anyway, he, he just he sort of... He, he trotted in, and we gave him a, a song... Uh, what was it? I think um, uh, it was based on a Doors song, actually. Uh, <laughs> funny enough. And he just played it as if he'd known it. And then... Yeah. You know, and he had, you know, had his fag in his mouth and um, just played it. We went gobsmacked. Yeah. I think the term uh, used to be eccentric. Uh, people <laughs> used to think that uh, a lot of people were an English eccentric. Well, he was an English eccentric, but I saw... 
<laughs> uh, I saw we were recording um, the, the Ten album, and a lot of it we did at my house because I had a little um, studio. We were preparing stuff on my yeah, 16, I think now I remember that. Yeah, on the sixteen track um, reel to reel, yeah. and then we transfer it onto a twenty four track, um, and then master it digitally. But he he, he was. Um, it was when he was doing his reenactment stuff. I think Dark oh. Age reenactment. So we're in the studio, and I think uh, the engineer at the time was a guy called Owen Morris. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he, I think he produced or, or co-produced and engineered uh, the first two Oasis albums. But he was he was working for me for a year before he went up. Uh, I think first to work with Johnny Marr and, and Oasis guys in Manchester. He was working for me, and um, he, um, I was by the console with him, and Dave was sitting in an armchair behind us, and I kept on looking, and Dave was creating a knitting, a, a chain mail, chain mail, and I said, Dave, could you stop that, please? You know, because we're trying to concentrate on everything. He, said, he carried on, <laughs> and we had words, and he, he stormed off in a half. And I had him up against the garage door. <laughs> we lifted him up. <laughs> I said, we're meant to be doing an album here and you're just doing a chain mail. I'll tell you um, what I remember. I'll tell you what I was thinking about the other day, which, which I don't know why, but it was bizarre. Can you remember that time when we were um, on the way back from a gig uh, in Birmingham and we were all crammed into the, into the car? I had Corin with me and it was before we got married and blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, we were talking about football, and we talked about uh, we were talking about the um, the offside. Uh, what renders somebody offside? Can you remember that? And Dave was sitting in the front, um, sort of sunk down with his flying jacket on, his tiny little head, it's kind of wobbling about. He'd had he'd had a few few shirts. It would be fair to say, um, and had and of course, as we all know, he had no interest in football whatsoever. And all of a sudden, he just we were all sitting there arguing because we were all a bit pissed and in high spirits after the gig. Uh, and Dave just turned round. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so much. I went back to the hotel room and I got a piece of paper and I wrote in huge letters, and I've still got it somewhere. Dave Greenfield explains the offside rule. Um, and Corin was saying, "You got." I, I was just. And he turned around in his chair and went, um, when the ball is played forward, the last man has to be uh, the, the defender of the opposing team. And, and he explained it perfect. Can you not, can you not remember that? <laughs> yes. And I, I just, hey, God, I mean, amongst, amongst many things. Some people have asked me, um, on listening to genetics from The Raven, they've asked me, um, so that's quite early for a sequencer. I said, what sequencer, you know? Um, no. he, I remember it because at the time we did, uh, we were rehearsing Raven at Jet's house in Gloucestershire at the time. And uh, Dave would, we'd have to give him two days all by himself and he'd learn every single note. I would love to know how many notes. I'm sure some, some nerd somewhere will have counted every single note that yeah. Dave that he's played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He played every single one. He learned <laughs> every single one. He was a human yeah. sequence. And once it was locked in, it was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I know from all the times that we played it with me Sorry? in the band, you know, I know yeah. from all the times that we played it with me in the band and thinking how tight it was and he would just be standing there just going, tick it, tick it, pop, tick it, tick it. You know, we've all, we all have our moments, let's be honest. But I'm happy... To, to think ah. <laughs> I'm happy to think that uh, the last time we all saw each other was good you know that's 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 what that's what uh, that's what I take from it all um, and I miss, I miss I miss the old bastard I really do I miss him like fuck um, but he would have wanted us to keep going wouldn't he he would have he would have I know he would have Um so it is what it is. God bless you, Dave. And uh, I hope you, you're well wherever you are. And I'm sure he is, you know. Um, oh, that's, uh, that's killed things a bit, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
it, it's quite hard to suddenly. Uh, uh, it, it's quite hard. It's quite hard, <laughs> it's quite hard <laughs> to uh, to lose someone you, you've you've loved uh, and a colleague and a friend and um, uh, yeah, and a friend for forty five years. It's um, yeah, but. The thing is, he did leave a legacy. He um, <laughs> he uh, left uh, some great music, but also um, he inspired um, some. Uh, uh, sorry, I've got to blow my nose. He inspired some um, some musicians, great musicians, and uh, he inspired some disciples. Yeah, honk honk. No one <laughs> like that. We've uh, brought in one of his uh, admirers or disciples to. Um, to fill in for him, or to, to play his stuff. Yeah. Well, he finished? he's a genuine, he's a, he's a genuine legend. Um, I know people bandy that word around a lot. Are you a fucking legend, man? Oh, you're a legend. No, no. Dave Greenfield was a legend. Um, and on that note, I think we should stop. All right, guys, look, that's Remember. it. That's, uh, Right, I'm going to put my mask on now and go and buy. I'm going to go and buy some disinfectant and some satsumas and uh, what else have we got on the list? Um, some whole new potatoes uh, and a few other bits and pieces. It's all rock and roll. Do you start to cook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, cook, I, I do cook. Corin, Corin finds it. Corin, <laughs> you put me on the spot. You always do this, you, you bugger. I mean, I've, I've gone in the kitchen many times and offered my services, and, and she, she, she never lets me. You're, you're full of shit with that. But <laughs> i tell you what, I'm going to buy you, I'm going to buy you a recipe book, and you just have to follow the recipe perfectly well, and then when she comes back in from work, or f from the office, downstairs, upstairs, you, she, you will have a dinner ready for her in the evening. Well, and it won't the, make you less of a, a northern man. I know, I know. And do you know what? I talk about that all the time, um, doing it. We've got in the kitchen, there must do. be... I talk about it all the time. <laughs> there, must be, there, must be, there must be 50 or 60 recipe books in the kitchen. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and, and because she's a, a gluten-free, wheat-intolerant vegan, yeah. um, basically, uh, I've said to her, I've said, in fact, I said to her last week, pick something out of this book and I will go to the shops, buy all the ingredients and make it for you. And I will, but it's never get around to it, you know. <laughs> Take care, buddy. I'll speak to you very soon. All right, you know, lots of love. Cheers. Bye. 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 Yeah.